Buddy, we begin with the COVID-19 vaccine. It's been approved in the UK and is on track to be approved in the US this month. But considering that news, are you asking yourself if it's safe? Well, if you're asking that question, you're certainly not alone. Joining us now to talk through the major points is Bloomberg Intelligence Senior Pharmaceutical Analyst Sam Fazelli, live from Bordeaux, France. Uh, Sam, it's good to have you back on the show on Quick Take. Uh, vaccines, they certainly usually take years to make. In fact, the record before these was in years, not in months, as we've seen from these. Um, the big question that a lot of people are asking right now is should they be worried that the vaccine has been rushed and, and may not have been tested enough? Yeah, so I think the key answer to there are several levels of answers to that question. And one is that the, the, the this very troublesome um, side effects that vaccines sometimes show tend to show up in the first two or three months after vaccinations. Hmm. It's rare that they take a long, long time to manifest. So, and I think we have to accept that by the time these vaccines start getting any serious traction amongst the population, between Pfizer and Moderna and BioNTech, we would have had something close to 40,000 people having had a vaccine in their arms, approaching th three, four, five months after their first dose at least. So if we hear nothing, which is, the, which is for once exciting, um, it, that, that, sounds, that, that would be good news. Uh, they do have tolerability issues, but serious, serious side effects based on clinical trial data, so far nothing. Sam, you did this Q&A with uh, Bloomberg Opinion, and I found this point fascinating. When people talk about the development of, this, of these vaccines, the mRNA vaccines from uh, Pfizer and BioNTech and as well as Moderna, um, they often talk about this vaccine only taking months, but you argue that, in fact, these vaccines have been in the making for a decade. So, so give us some history there. Yeah, I think, I think it's, um, I, you know, it's perhaps the wrong choice of phrase here, but I think it's a bit of a disservice to the uh, scientists, the thousands of scientists who've been working on understanding the SARS virus, if you call back, I recall uh, in, the, in the early 2000s, the SARS-CoV-1 that was called, and then the MERS virus, which is similar, but it was a coronavirus that, um, that circulated in camels um, and, of course, was in the Middle East. And they even developed a vaccine to the MERS virus. And quite a lot of science from what our, we understood from the respiratory syncytial virus uh, biology has, has fed into this. So this is work that's based on many decades of research, not just nine months. The governor of New York, Andrew Cuomo, tweeting just moments ago, New York's first delivery of the Pfizer vaccine will be enough for 170,000 New Yorkers and it will be ready by December 15th. Uh, I'm curious about your thoughts on, on the speed at which Cuomo is pledging to get this to the, to the people of New York. Uh, look, even, even now, still one of the worst hit states in the US. Yeah, so I've, I've also followed some of the um, disagreements and discontent between uh, the administration perhaps and New York um, in terms of some of that. I don't think any of that's playing into this. There aren't that many doses available. You know, if you think there's about 50 million doses available from Pfizer-BioNTech by the end of this year, that's for lots of countries. And then you have the variety of states that you have to deal with within the U.S. So that doesn't sound like a, a particularly bad number for New York, uh, New York City to get to. Um, Sam, how does this play out around the world or, or, or in, in developed countries, I guess I should ask? Um, do you imagine that consumers will, will have the chance to pick which vaccine they want, if they want one from AstraZeneca or if they want one from, from Pfizer or Moderna? Um, I, I, I actually don't think that we're going to have the luxury of doing that because we're going to be so short of supply in terms of getting vaccines to people. So it's going to come down to the regulators to make sure that the right population are offered the right vaccine. So far, it appears that the Moderna vaccine and the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine have similar efficacy, perhaps slightly different tolerability. So maybe you offer the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine to people who are less likely to tolerate um, the vaccine and Moderna to, to those who are le less worried about it. And then if AstraZeneca comes out and shows that actually in the younger population it did really well, then fine. Then the regulators can approve it for that and they can go from there. So I think that's going to be how it pans out. Bloomberg Intelligence is Sam Fazelli. Thanks as always for your time. We appreciate it.
The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.